Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this channel. Today we're going to be doing a very cool exercise. We're starting the week, so hopefully this is a nice way to kickstart elements and, and go into the into the full 3D mindset. So there we go. Today we're going to be doing a bike thread. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, hey, what would be a good model to practice? I'm, I'm new to 3D. I want to challenge myself, but I don't want to go super overboard. And I want to do something that is easily doable and that we can finish in a relatively short amount of time. A bike is a great one. A, modeling a bike, a motorcycle, a boat, uh, things that are complex enough to, to become a challenge, but not super difficult like a transformer or like a Lamborghini and stuff. Um, are a great way to, to learn. So today I'm going to be showing you how I would do the tires. So uh, a couple of minutes ago, I downloaded this uh, image from, from the internet. I'm in the top view already with the image plane set up. And uh, we're going to be doing this style right here, which is it has this very nice arrow shapes and, and I like it. So I'm going to go into Mesh Tools, Create Polygon, and I'm going to create a big square right here because this is going to be my first like little shape. Then I'm going to go into Quad Draw, and I'm just gonna finish the shape. Now you can see that the shape has a little bit of uh, of rounded edges, but we can we can do those later. I can start with a very basic shape like this, and I know when I press number three, if my topology is properly aligned, we're gonna get a nice shape. I'm actually gonna do it. So I'm gonna create a shape here that has a little bit of a border, and once we hit this corner, I'm gonna change the way this flows. See how I'm creating this little like U shape? so that when we connect here and we press number three to smooth it out, we get a nice smooth effect right there. I'm probably gonna need one more here. That's a square, one line here, and that little thing becomes a square. And there we go. Now, I do see the same sort of effect on the on the opposite side, like on the, on the border here. So I am gonna give it the same treatment. So I'm gonna change this or push this in a little bit. And this is going to create proper topology that when we smooth it, everything is going to be a little bit rounder. Now we want to keep those round corners a little bit, um, let's call it uh, sharper. We can, of course, add one support line there. As you can see, that keeps it sharp. It's the one support edge right there. And we get very close to the to the shape that we want. Now, of course, I'm smart. I don't want to I don't want to be doing extra work. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab all of these points R to scale them and make sure that they're really straight. Again, this is going to help me keep the topology really clean. Now in number three, I'm just going to slightly move these things out so that they fit the best possible way. These guys as well, number three, to keep them, not that one, just that one, to keep them really straight. These guys, let's keep them straight. And these guys, let's keep them straight. That's going to give me a sharper or a nicer looking shape. So if we take a look at the, at the thread, we, of course, don't need to do this like 70 times again we can just duplicate this little guy and, and position it where it needs to be and the same goes for the for the little arrows like we don't actually need to create the pattern for the whole thing we we only need a section of the element right so if we turn on the grid right here i'm actually gonna uh go into my grid options and reset them because it's i'm using another section there we go if we turn on the grid here we can see that technically if we were to grab certain amount of squares we should be able to create something called a pattern. So in this case, I can see that the top border here hits this right, or hit this, hits this line very nicely. So one thing I can do is I can grab all of these vertices, snap them together oh, here, and make sure they're completely snapped to that grid right there, to the, to the upper X grid. And then I can do the same thing for the lower vertices, like just scale them so they're exactly there. And I know that we have this other guy right here, that uh, or the next, yeah, one of the next positions where we see this is probably this guy down here. That's where we see the, the bottom side of the thing being aligned. So by aligning this guy right here, I know that we're going to be able to finish the whole pattern. But I don't want to do the whole pattern like eight times, so I'm just going to do two. I'm going to keep it right here, and then, and then we'll figure it out from here. So I'm going to place this guy right here. Let's center the pivot point. Control D. Duplicate, and of course, we're going to rotate this 180 degrees so that it's on the other side. And this should be right about there. Well, in this case, I'm going to ignore the pattern just a little bit because I want to I wanna keep it completely symmetrical with these guys. I just want to modify the rotation, nothing else. And then uh, I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. Control D, displace it around, and rotate it 180 degrees. That way, the vertices here should match the vertices here. Uh, we're going to grab all of them, of course, and we're going to combine them in a single shape, and there we go. Again, I know that they don't match the uh, the arrows right now. We, we might fix that later on, but now I'm just going to keep it like that. Now let's do the arrows here. 
And for the arrows, we're going to uh, use the exact same technique. So I'm going to start, I'm going to show you another technique here. That's very cool. I'm going to go into edit mesh, sorry, uh, mesh tools. Again, create polygon. I'm going to create one square, but as you can see, I'm leaving a little bit of a gap uh, for the border. And then with my quad draw, I'm just going to fill in the gap like here, like this. You can see that the arrow has like a long leg and a small leg. That's a little bit weird, but that's the... I'm not sure if AI, yeah, it seems to be the, the way the, the thread is working. So we'll keep it like that. There we go. And now if I grab all the edge here and I extrude out with thickness or with offset in this case, you're gonna see that we get the exact same thing that we had before, a nice little edge that holds very nicely. Now it's just a matter of adding a couple of support edges like here and here to keep it round. One here to keep it round as well. And one here to keep it round. There we go. Now to alleviate a little bit of the of the topology tension down here, because you can see that's a little bit too much. I mean, it, it's good. We get the sharp line though, so I'm probably gonna keep it. Just gonna move this little corner back a little bit like this. And there we go. We have the, the nice little arrow shape. I think it might be a little bit off there. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing. It's just gonna center the pivot point, control D, move it around and duplicate it 180 degrees. There we go. Again, it's not matching this thing perfectly, which is fine, uh, because I'd rather have something that's a little bit easier to work than, um, than not. So now comes the interesting part. I know that this line right here is my cutoff point, right? That's where my, my patch is going to start. And I know that this line right here is my next cutoff point, because I need to have a little bit of space once we do the, like this, this exact same space that we have right here, this one right here, needs to be present up here. So that means that this exact space I need to have right here. So my cutoff point for my, my uh, thread, if I wanna start right there, is gonna be this line right here, okay? That's where I'm gonna cut my pattern. Again, if I, I, if I were to, to create this in, in a sort of a pattern way, this is gonna be my cutoff point, and this is my, gonna be my second cutoff point. So that when we duplicate this pattern over here on the top, this same space that we have here, which is the same one as this one, or should be, is gonna be respected, okay? So that means that I need a couple of extra lucky little arrows here. So what I'm gonna do, whoop, let's keep it here. I'm gonna duplicate these arrows, move them up right about there, as close as possible to what we're looking for, and then duplicate these arrows and move them down right about there, okay? Now I'm gonna grab all of them, I'm gonna combine them in a single object, and what I wanna do is I wanna create a line. Okay, I can erase this now. So I know that my cutoff point for this triangles is this line right here, right? So I'm gonna grab my cut tool, and I'm gonna cut a line straight down the, the vertex line. And everything that's outside of the line is gonna be erased. Now you can see this is not perfectly aligned, that's fine, I'm just gonna grab all of these guys, and with my X, I'm gonna snap it right there because eventually these little triangles here should combine with whatever is gonna be left over here. So for this one, so I'm gonna have to be a little bit more, I'm gonna have to calculate something a little bit more, so it's gonna be roughly about there, and we're gonna erase this guys right here. Make sure that we don't have any like little extra faces here or there. And technically, technically, if we were to duplicate this pattern, let's move it to the side for instance, let's isolate it for a second. If I grab this pattern, move its pivot point down here and snap it to the next one, things should match pretty closely, which in this case are not matching perfectly. I'm gonna show you another way in which we can actually make them match perfectly. It's actually very easy. I'm not, I'm not sure why I didn't do it before. Uh, so here we go. So I'm gonna delete this guys. Let's delete this guy. Grab this pencil, delete, there we go. So I'm gonna go here to this guys. I'm gonna grab, again, trying to be as perfect as possible. We need to be very careful because as you can see, there's there's a couple of lines and vertices that go really close to the border there. So I'm gonna be as close as possible. And, and before I cut it, I'm actually just gonna grab the whole line that I just created. 
make sure that we're not grabbing anything that we shouldn't be grabbing. Just that extra line that I drew, that one. And I'm gonna snap it to the to the X, X line. There we go. So as you can see, that's perfectly aligned. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this guys and this guys. I'm gonna say uh, edit mesh and duplicate. And we're gonna have these two guys right here. So we're just gonna position them right where we are expecting this whole thing to work. This is about there. And now we delete this guys right here. The little extra like tip that we have. So it goes away. And on this guys, we delete everything else. Because now I know that they are coming from the same exact piece. So when I technically, when I combine these guys again, so the history and duplicate, if I move the pivot point all the way down and we snap it all the way up, both things should be matching perfectly. See that? Pretty good, right? So I know that this is working. I know that once we uh, we match all of these guys, everything is going to work fine. However, we need to create the surface where these things are going to be popping out because they're extrusions, and uh, therefore we need to do a little bit of a, of an, a little bit more work here for uh, in regards to. Uh, what's the word in regards to topology now it, it seems like I also messed up here on this area like this guy is way too out so what I'm gonna do whenever this happens what I like to do is just move the pivot point to this and then snap to point and snap to this exact same point so that they're both sharing the exact same height here I think we're fine that way I know that everything's working fine. So here's where topology is gonna play an important role because I need to fill in, or one way in which we can do this is completely fill in this elements right here and uh, and then extrude the this shapes that we already have. So I'm gonna go into my quadro here and I'm gonna try to clean this up in the best possible way. So I know for instance that here's a big square right here and there's another big square right here. We're gonna have one here and one here, see that? So so it, it's just a matter of trying to follow the, the rules that we've been talking about in regards to, to topology. And those rules uh, we already know are try and keep everything as uh, nice as possible. All of, all the squares that you can have, keep them as squares and uh, and just like keep, uh, yeah, keep everything as clean as possible. Now there are a couple of vertices that we're gonna have to fix, that's fine. Later on, if we want, we can reduce the amount of polygons. Right now I'm, I'm more concerned about um, I'm making sure that everything follows as nice as possible. So for instance here, like this change in silhouette, that's fine. We can just move this thing out a little bit. It, it shouldn't change that much or we just leave it like that. Same deal here, let's just, let's just start connecting things that make sense. Trying to keep the topology as clean as possible. So for instance here, I need one extra line, that's fine, I'll add one more line. I need one more line there, and we add it. This is a little bit of retopology. I know some of you guys have been asking us about uh, retopology. It's it's not retopology per se because we're doing some weird stuff, but it's a little bit of the process that we need to follow. Here we can add one more line there. Uh, I'm trying to see if this is the best method, to be honest. I'm questioning myself now. I think no, I think we can do something a little bit better. It, it, this is not, uh, if we were, uh, it's fine. Yeah, I think we're gonna, we're gonna be fine. So here's what I'm gonna do. Instead of doing that whole process that I was uh, about to do, which is, it's not bad, but it's it's gonna take a little bit uh, longer. I'm just gonna overlap two objects. I'm gonna go here to the top view. I'm gonna move this new plane here. And I'm gonna position this plane in such a way that this vertice is right here. are snapped to the line here. And this one's right here. I'm gonna snap them with V key to the last edges right there. And then I'm just gonna extend this out and do the exact same thing. Grab all of these vertices and snap them with my V key to the border there. And these guys with my V key to the border there. There we go. Now, I am gonna grab uh, these guys, which were the original shapes. I'm gonna control E to extrude them and I'm gonna extrude them out to create the, the actual thread, right? So this is actually gonna do the, this is gonna create the, the volumes that we are uh, going for. 
we press number three, we're going to get this soft uh, thing, which is, again, not bad, but it's not exactly what we're going for. And we also have all of this like weird things right here, which is, again, not what we want. And the reason why, especially on this area, we don't want this, guys, is because this faces right here will eventually combine with the... Um, with the other shapes, right? Like the shapes that we cut and are on the other side. So I'm gonna delete this guys right here. So there's no uh, merge of the of the vertices. On this ones, I'm not worried because th this guy has free space over here. But all of this guys, we definitely wanna get rid of the extra faces. We have to manually select this guys because the edge loops going somewhere else that I don't want. There we go. Careful about this, like very small one as well, because that one's. I think that one's gonna be. Although I don't see, I think that one's it's fine. Because it's not on the on the border, so that's fine. There we go. Uh, there's a little bit of overlap here on the on the floor. That's fine. I mean, we can leave it because these shapes are just gonna be sitting on top. Again, if we press number three, you can see how we get this very nice effect. And if we want to keep them sharper, we of course can always do just like a like a bevel to the general shapes, and that's gonna keep them really, really, really sharp. But we can do that at the end as well. So gonna go back on that bevel and now comes the fun part i'm gonna grab the whole thing i'm gonna say top view i'm gonna say Control d i'm gonna move the pivot point of these objects and snap them to the top now another way to do it is we can just grab both objects combine them so they're one single object Control d move the pivot point down and then snap this all the way to the top like this or to the grid because the, the top part was the grid so the grid is going to be there. But then for the next one, we can't snap to the grid because if we snap to the grid, we're going to miss the the union point. So we're going to say Control D and then V and snap to point to the uh, uppermost point. As you can see, that's going to nicely connect there. And then I can press Shift D to repeat the last action. And that way, we can duplicate this as many times as we need until we create the thread that we want. So in this case, I'm doing, uh, let's do 35. So there we go. And we have this very long strip of uh, repeatable pattern going all the way across the uh, the whole thing. Here's where the fun begins. I'm going to grab the, the whole thing. I'm going to combine it so that it's a single object. And then I'm going to use one of the deformers that we used last time or when we were doing the Aku Aku mark, mask. If you haven't seen that video, check out the, the playlist that we have on the channel. Uh, we did a, the Aku Aku fan art last week. And... Uh, and we saw how to do a little bit of movement on the feathers. So I'm going to go here into the form. I'm going to say nonlinear. I'm gonna, we're going to bend. And if we move this curvature all the way to the top, 180, and we rotate this thing like this, and 90 degrees, and then we rotate this thing downwards, again, in this case it's zero, look at this beautiful thing. We get this very nice wheel that perfectly connects everything because we were sure to make the thing as a pattern. And the pattern is, is is going all the way around in a very nice way. Now it's just a matter of deleting this thing, or sorry, uh, deleting the history. And the only problem is that this thing has no, uh, they're, they're not combined. I mean, we, we did combine them and we did do this thing, but they're not a single object, right? They're uh, multiple objects. So we need to, <coughs> sorry, we need to make sure that all of the vertices that we just uh, bended and, and duplicated are actually welded together. So, um, actually, I, we should do that before the bend, just to be safe. So here, before the bend, I'm going to grab the whole object, and I'm going to say Edit Mesh, Merge, and I'm going to merge on a point zero zero one way. So that way, vertices that were on top of each other, which is the arrows that were cut, this one right here, they're now welded together. See, it's a single point instead of uh, two points. Now, it's just a matter of doing, again, the deform. So I'm just going to go with the form, nonlinear, bend, curvature all the way to the top, and then we need to rotate this thing so that it is uh, going in the exact way that we want. So this is zero, and there we go. Now we delete history in this to get rid of the bend, and we need to do the bend thing again so that where, where this thing meets on the, on the bottom here, uh, where two of the vertices are meeting, we also get a complete uh, merge. So I'm gonna say um, edit mesh and uh, merge. And there we go. So now I know that this is a completely nice uh, shape. Now, of course, the ring is a separate shape. 
oh, it seems like it welded a couple of points. That's fine. I mean, if it welded a couple of points, it's, it's completely fine. But the, the whole object is now working as the, as the thread that we're uh, going for. Now, I do think it's a little bit wide for a bicycle uh, thread. So the, the easiest way to change this is to just like scale it down. So it's uh, a little bit thinner. And of course we need, to, or we want to complete the, the inner side, but that's very simple because thanks to this first plane that we did, we can just grab the borders here, for instance, and extrude in to create the nice little shape here. So let's say something like this. I'm gonna offset this so it goes towards the center. And now with my insert edge loop, I am gonna, I'm gonna go into edit mesh insert edge loop sorry mesh tools insert edge loop let's insert like uh, three so we're gonna go three there and three there and we can grab this edge this edge this edge and this edge r r key push it out just to give a little bit of uh, roundness as you can see there and then this edge and this edge, we're just gonna extrude it once again. And we're gonna create a little bit of like a lip. So we're gonna go in, control E. We're gonna go in again, but towards the center like this. And there we go. Now, the only issue with this technique, as you can see, is that this is a very heavy object. It's a, it's an object that has uh, 50,000, 25,000 faces. I can do a smooth. I'm going to say just and ask again. My computer, I think, should be able to handle it, as you can see. But as you can see, when we do smooth, we lose a little bit of the of the effect there. So, um, so yeah, this is this is pretty much the one of the ways to do a, a thread. This is a, a model thread. It's a way to do a model thread. And uh, it is going to give you a good result, but as you can see, it is going to be a little bit heavy. So just keep that in mind if you are going to be using this in, in any sort of project or anything. I do think, I do think that we missed a little bit of roundness on top here. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back and fix this real quick. I know that we're going a little bit longer than usual, but hopefully this is uh, this is helping you guys. So what I'm going to do is the following. So let me go back here right about here before the the merge because i want to keep the the plane as a separate piece from the what what happened here oh here i want to keep the plane as a separate piece from the from the rest of the pieces so what i'm going to do is i am going to oh it's a single object mm. Let's separate. Let's do the history first to clean all of this mess. I'm gonna separate again, which is gonna be a complete mess, of course. And I'm gonna go uh, front view, select everything, deselect those guys, so I, I know that only the the plane is, is being modified here. I'm gonna combine the plane as a single object. Then I'm gonna grab everything else, except for the plane, of course. Combine everything else. So now we have two shapes. I think this is gonna be better. Now, uh, the only ones that I, well, I actually need to fix both. So I'm just gonna select this one first, Mer uh, edit mesh, merge. Again, to make sure that all of the vertices are uh, combined. I'm now gonna select the plane, edit mesh, merge. There we go. I'm gonna grab this guy and uh, I'm gonna do the, the band option as a separate for, for each of them. I think even though if they're separate sur uh, surfaces, I think we can do them on both of them as, at the same time. So I'm gonna say the form. Uh, Nonlinear bend, curvature. I'm gonna turn on the screen rotate so this snaps. There we go. So that's gonna that's gonna give us give us the wheel. But before I do that, this is what I, what I wanted to do. I'm gonna grab both of them. I'm gonna say deform. Uh, Nonlinear again, bend, and I wanna bend the whole thing a little bit. So I'm just gonna rotate this to this area. And using the curvature, I'm just gonna give this a little bit of curvature like this. I even want a little bit more, so I'm not sure how, there's no way to increase the curvature. Can we scale this? Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna scale this in, scale the gizmo in, so that you get a, a rounder look here. See, it's a, it's a little bit of a, of a closed, uh, closed ellipse. 
There we go. I, I, I think that's fine. Just so that we get some roundness on the top. And we grab both of the elements. We delete history. We grab both of the elements again. We go mesh uh, tools. Sorry, mesh uh, uh, deform. Nonlinear. We do another bend. And now we just snap this here. And uh, here. Yeah, that looks way better. See, because we get the, the roundness on, on, on pretty much the whole thing. So we have those two things with lay history. Lay history. Now I'm also going to just scale this in a little bit so it's a little bit narrower, closer to like a like a mountain bike thread. And if we go into the the this guy right here, the 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 plane, we can do some uh, reduction because we, we don't need all of this edges. So we can go uh, one and one, one and one, and just control and uh, delete so that we delete those uh, guys. And now we can build the, the thing that I wanted to build first. Well, one thing first, we of course need to go uh, edit mesh merge so that we have the outer edge and the inner edge. Control E. And we're gonna extrude kind of like in to create like the little, I think usually it's like a like a flatter surface first. Probably not as, not as intense. And then we go into like a narrower section. Some of you mountain bikers out there might be able to get a better result here. Control E. And now I'm gonna do the little lip that I did before. So just go in, Control E, and go in. To create like the thing that hugs the, the rim. I'm gonna say yes, and let's see how this looks. There we go. So look at that beautiful thing. It seems like we still got the merge there. Shouldn't have happened though. Do we combine them at some point? I think we might have. Now one way one way to fix that a little bit is just add one edge loop there and one edge loop here. One more there and one more here. And that should help hold the edge a little bit better. There we go. So yeah, we still have a little bit of that thing. I, I think that happened because of the, what's the word? Because of the um, extra edge that we did there. Shouldn't be that much of a deal. So let's just grab this guy and this guy. I'm gonna bevel it. Keep a low fraction. Let's say like a point 0.5. Is that too much? Yeah, that's too much. 0 0.05. There we go. Now when we press number three, we get this very nice wheel. So that's it, guys. This is one of the techniques that I want to show you. I wanted to uh, demonstrate how uh, creating a nice pattern, making sure that mathematically the pattern works, it's very easy to create this sort of thing. So now I would just need to duplicate this a couple more times, create the, the race of the, of the bike, and of course the whole other uh, elements, and, and that will be it. Uh, but as you can see, this works very, very nice. It gives us a nice result. This is, again, this is a model, like traditionally model threads, which they're really, really expensive. I would never use this for a game. It's just way, way too much. Uh, but for like a cinematic or a movie, I think it, it should be fine. There's, of course, ways to reduce this. Um, but again, just one uh, or several quick little tips for you guys. So if you like this, make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe. Uh, make sure to leave us comments, questions, anything. It's welcome. Uh, let us know what else you want us to cover. Check out our premium courses, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.